Whee! Dr. Draw Alex here. If you're looking for a job in animation, comics, or you just want to be an awesome artist, you've probably encountered the moment where you wanted to rotate a box in space. Rotating a box doesn't sound very impressive, but if you want to rotate a figure, then first you'll need to be able to visualize the box around it. Rotating a figure is freaking hard, so we'll look at that in a later video. In this video, we're going to look at the science behind rotating a box. And I'll show you how you can apply that science to your own work. But before we jump into rotating boxes, let's have a look at how a master uses rotation. If we look at this drawing by Kim Young Gi, you'll see that perspective is a pretty important subject. If we decrease the opacity and draw boxes around some of these figures, you'll see that even those figures align with the perspective. But there are some elements that are a bit rotated, like the head of this bunny soldier, this guy and this one. And maybe some other things, but most of the drawing is aligned with the yellow perspective grid. Which means in a drawing you don't need everything to be rotated to give it a dynamic feeling. Just rotating one or two things will go a long way. So how do we rotate a box? Let's look at the science. There are two main things to consider. First and foremost is the axis or center of rotation, which you can find by drawing a cross on the top plane from the corners, indicated by this red line. If we highlight the corners of this box and draw an ellipse using those points, you'll see this ellipse helps us in rotating this box. But first, there's another thing we need to take into account, and that's X, Y, and Z. In school, you might have heard of X and Y during math. You know, the thing we use to plot lines and graphs and whatnot. Z is the third dimension that creates depth. A great example of using two or three dimensions is a Mario. This is Super Mario Bros. in 2D and only using X and Y. And this is Super Mario 3D World. The name already implies it. They're using three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. But let's get back to our box. Here we can find X, Y, and Z by looking at the edges. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z. You can see that the center of rotation is similar to Y. So if we use this ellipse to rotate the box, X and Z will change and Y will stay the same. For example, if we rotate the corners of our box clockwise along this ellipse and connect them, you'll see that this plane is already rotated. Y hasn't changed, so we can just draw those lines following the vanishing point. And when we connect everything, we'll get a rotated box. <gasps> but let's take this one step further, because terms like vanishing points, dimensions and the horizon have to do with perspective. If perspective is new to you, please watch this video first by clicking the link in the top right. This video explains everything you need to know about perspective. But back to our box. If we extend the lines of the edges, uh, zoom out and extend the lines of the edges, you'll see that they'll eventually hit each other. That's because this box exists within space and space is perspective. These things are called vanishing points and live on a horizon line. And we can name these vanishing points X, Y and Z. Now you'll see that these lines don't perfectly hit each other on the vanishing point. And that's fine because we're artists, we're not engineers. Just be sure to get close enough. But now let's elongate the lines of our second box. You'll see that these hit different vanishing points for X and Z. Y stays the same because that's the axis or center of rotation. This shows that if we rotate a box, the vanishing points of the box rotate as well. It's a bit like the wheel of fortune, where the edge of the wheel represents the horizon line and the sticks represent the potential vanishing points. Our first box, let's call this box A, is using these vanishing points. But box B uses these vanishing points. You could sort of use the horizon line to slide your vanishing points. You get the gist of it. But let us quickly recap before it gets even more challenging. Step one is visualizing the axis or center of rotation. And step two is thinking about X, Y, and Z and determining the perspective. And this is where it gets fun because the axis or center of rotation is always perpendicular, meaning opposite, of the line on which the vanishing points move. Let me explain using a cool animation. In our first example, this red line was the center of rotation and this yellow perpendicular line guided our vanishing points. 
but we could also put the center of rotation here and then this yellow perpendicular line would guide the vanishing points like this and we can also put the center of rotation here and then this yellow perpendicular line would guide the vanishing points like this i told you this was gonna be nice if you liked the video so far be sure to give it a like and share your thoughts in the comments below i pour my heart and knowledge in making these videos and if you show your appreciation this video will be shared with more aspiring artists but let's have another look at this yellow grid now with volume what if i told you this grid is the exact same thing as this grid the only difference is that the left one is how our eyes work hence it's rounded and the right one is drawn on a piece of paper that's nice and all but how do we use this in our drawings Remember the drawing by Kim Young Gi in which most objects follow the grid? We're gonna use this trick. The best way to learn is to draw along. So now would be a good moment to grab your sketchbook. Let's start from the box we've already drawn and just add a couple of boxes underneath this one. This is to build some confidence and landmarks for ourselves. Remember Kim's tactics. But above this box, we're gonna draw our first rotated box. Let's start with step one and draw the center of rotation, which we can find by measuring the corners from the box we've already drawn. Then step two is to draw the ellipse to guide the center of the corners. And in step three, we connect everything. And above, we'll add another normal box. Let's add another normal box to the left and underneath we'll do a rotated box. But this one is gonna be with a different center of rotation. Step one is finding the center of rotation, then the ellipse and measure the new corners. Fill the space up with more boxes just to give the viewer something to look at. And now we're gonna do a difficult one. We're gonna draw a box that's a bit more in space. So start by measuring all corners of what it would look normally in our normal perspective. Find the minor axes we haven't done yet and follow the same steps again. The name of the game is repetition. Now let's fill the rest of the space with some regular boxes. And if we clean it up a bit and add a background shading, you'll see that with just a couple of lines and some shading, this drawing looks pretty spacious and dynamic. If you've been drawing along, you might have felt that this was pretty challenging. And depending on your skill level of drawing boxes, you might want to look up drawabox.com. This website is a great resource for learning to draw boxes, perspective and form. But even if you're very skilled in drawing, doing something like this is still going to lead to mistakes. The trick is to keep going and cover up your mistakes. Even Kim Young Gi makes mistakes, but he just knows how to cover them up. If we look very closely to this drawing, you'll see that these red lines aren't following the grid that they should. But if we stop being nitpicky, you'll see it doesn't matter because there's so much going on, those mistakes lose their value and thus we accept them. The biggest tip I can give you is to keep going. Whether that's in a drawing or with your art in general, eventually you'll look back and you'll be satisfied. As an artist, we don't need to be super precise, but we need to be correct-ish. And that means following the rules of perspective like we just discussed. This box, for example, with diverging lines is wrong, but this box with converging lines is correct-ish. But to get to correct-ish, we need to draw about a thousand rotating boxes. And the good news is, if you come back tomorrow, do this video again and do the exercise, it'll be 1% easier. It's that simple. But if you want to do a longer tutorial together, check out my form video on Gumroad and I might soon be opening up a subscription base for specific exercises here on YouTube or Patreon. If you've drawn along, make a photo of your drawing and share it on Instagram and tag me in it. I'll be sure to share your drawing in my stories. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Stay diggity drawing. Adios. A great example of using two or three dimensions. Dimens dimensions. Super Mario Bros. <sighs>
Look look at this guy. Whee! <laughs>